This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to worship at Bethlehem Lutheran Church, Santa Rosa. This is our midweek Lenten worship service, and we are reading through uh, the, the second lesson that is uh, for Palm Sunday, uh, Palm and Passion Sunday each year, and that is from Philippians, the second chapter. And today, uh, we have an emphasis on every tongue should confess. Let us remember the great promises of God as we begin in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, grant us a quiet night and peace at the last. Holy and gracious God, we confess that we have sinned against you this day. Some of our sin we know, the thoughts and words and deeds of which we are ashamed, but some sin is known only to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we ask forgiveness. Deliver and restore us that we may rest in peace. By the mercy of God, we are united with Jesus Christ, in whom we are forgiven. Now, we rest in the peace of Christ, and we rise in the morning to serve. first reading for this evening is from Genesis, the 28th chapter, and then I will continue on to the 32nd chapter. We'll skip plenty of verses in between. I begin Genesis 28, verse 10. Jacob left Beersheba and went to Haran. He came to a certain place and stayed there for the night. Because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones of that place, he put it under his head and laid down in that place. And he dreamed. There was a ladder set up on the earth, the top of it reaching to heaven. And the angels of God were ascending and descending upon it. The Lord stood beside him and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham your father and the God of Isaac, the land in which you lie I will give to you and to your offspring. And you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. And all the families of the earth shall be blessed in you and in your offspring. Know that I am with you and will keep you wherever you go, and I will bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. This story is of Jacob on the run. He's on the run because he has tripped his brother out of his birthright and out of his inheritance. And he is on the run to his mother's brother's land. I like to call this land not Haran, but Laban land. This is where Laban rules. And he is on the run just to get away from his brother Esau, who has sworn to kill him. 
There's a lot in names in Scripture, and uh, there's a lot in the name of Jacob. You can read in Genesis, in the passages before this one, about how he and his twin brother Esau are in the womb together, and Jacob is born. Uh, Esau is born with Jacob holding on to his heel. And he is given the name Jacob because he grasps at the heel as if he will somehow be able to pull Esau back into the womb. Not to be done. But he has spent plenty of time wrestling with Esau, and uh, so it comes that he is given the name Grasps at the Heel, which, if we think about it, is uh, pretty much an equivalent to tripping somebody up. I like to abbreviate the meaning of this name as tricky. Imagine poor Jacob everywhere he goes, telling people that his name means tricky, giving them fair warning. And of course, he tricks his brother Esau out of the birthright. But now he has a threat of death over him, and he does not know what to do. He only knows where to run does not know what will happen. And even in this youth of his, God is with him. And he has this dream, this conversation with God, with the messengers of God, the angels ascending and descending that Jacob's ladder that we know so well. Here begins a great and lengthy saga in fear, only with a dream of God's presence to sustain him. Well, the rest of 28 goes by, and 29, and 30, and 31, and deep into 32, we come to Jacob's return. For he is no longer welcome in Laban land. He is the outsider carries no privilege anymore, even though he has married two of Laban's daughters, even though he has fathered children by four women and now has, well, you will hear. He is returning. That same night, Jacob got up and he took his two wives, his two maids, and his eleven children, and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. He took them, and he sent them across the stream, and likewise, everything that he had. Jacob was left alone. And a man wrestled with him. Till daybreak. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, the man struck Jacob on the hip socket, and Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then Jacob said, Then the man said, Let me go, for day is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So the man said to him, What is your name? And he said, Jacob. And the man said, You shall no longer be called Jacob, but you shall be called Israel. For you have striven with God and humans have prevailed. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Knowing only the land that he returns and not knowing his fate. Knowing in his great prosperity that he is carrying with him, he still is under the threat of death from his brother Esau. He still 
does not know who he is. And he wrestles for a blessing. Perhaps he knows that the blessing that he had tricked his brother out of was not genuinely a blessing. And here he tries to earn it. And the man he wrestles with gives him a blessing of a new name, no longer tricky, but now a name that means, literally, wrestles with God. Does this mean that he wrestles against God for his own will, or that he wrestles with God on his side. Either way, whenever we struggle, we can know that God is on our side, even when we are struggling against God, even when we are struggling against the great fears of our own minds, the great fears of all of our circumstances, when all of our prosperity will count for nothing, when we belong in the place we are and are going to, but know not what fate awaits us there. God has prospered Jacob in a foreign land. And now God must do one more thing. One more thing so that this legacy, these 11 sons and the whole clan, the whole family, can arrive in the promised land, the 12th son can be born, the 12 sons who become, well, the names of the tribes of Israel, the entire clan, the entire family becoming the people who will be the people that God blesses to go into all places in great faithfulness. And they will go through even greater trials again and again and again and again and again and again they will be sustained by God. God who will come to them and say, I am with you. You are not alone. Strive, struggle, wrestle. Wrestle against me. Wrestle against all the evil that might come to you. But wrestle knowing that I am with you. If you really need to know what happens when Jacob meets Esau, Open your own Bible to Genesis. It's the first book. Very easy to find. Chapter 32 and read through. Before us is our psalm this evening. Psalm 148. Let us read it together. Oh, even if it is the season of Lent, we will say, praise the Lord. We will say, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise the Lord in the heights. Praise the Lord, all angels. Praise the Lord, all hosts. Praise the Lord, sun and moon. Praise the Lord, all you shining stars. Praise the Lord, you highest heavens. And you waters above the heavens. Let all praise the name of the Lord. For the Lord commanded, and they were created establishing them forever and ever. 
fixing their bounds which cannot be passed. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters and all depths. Fire and hail, snow and frost, stormy wind fulfilling the command, mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth, young men, women, all peoples alike, old and young together. Let us praise the name of the Lord, for the Lord name alone is exalted. The Lord glory is upon earth and heaven. The Lord has raised up a horn for all people. Praise for all faithful. For the people of Israel who are close to the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let us pray. God most high. By your word, you created a wondrous universe, and through your spirit, you breathed into it the breath of life. Accept creation's hymn of praise from our lips, and let the praise that is sung in heaven resound in the heart of every creature on earth, to the glory of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. reading from Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself taking the form of a slave and being born in human likeness and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has also highly exalted him and given him the name that is above every name. So at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue should confess, every tongue should confess, every tongue should confess, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Heavenly Father. The word of the Lord. phrase this week, every tongue should confess. It says a lot. It invites us to reconsider how humble we need to be. Humble with Christ who emptied himself, who became obedient. That our needs at his name at a name, Jesus, a name that means the God that is, is saving. That at that name, we might exalt and praise God. 
Every tongue should confess. Perhaps this word streaming in from the original language, the Greek, would carry a, a sense of a sense of dogma, a sense of, of confession that Jesus is incarnated and lives and has died and is raised and ascended. As if it is a creed of confession. Perhaps it is only a happy accident that the word confession, as it's translated in the new revised standard, that word confession would also carry our humble stature. Not a stature where we have gained Christ's superiority or would pretend that we are entitled to anything that is beyond emptying ourselves and being humble ourselves and being obedient ourselves and bending our knees ourselves, that our confession should be one like the confession we made at the beginning of this service, where we examine ourselves very carefully and see where it is and how it is that we stand in God's light and how we fit into a plan, um, an idea, a concept of an eternal God hard at work in humanity as our, as our story, even with its own saga, as our own story is yet part of a grand and great story. Even Jacob, who had a saga while he was in Laban land, received those two marvelous signs in dreams in the night of God's presence, that God would be with and that God is present and struggles with all of us. As we come toward an Easter, which always gives us an inspiration and hope, maybe, maybe this Easter we need to begin to look back over our shoulders and see the different ways that God has been with us so that we, we might live into this Easter deep and present promises that God brings. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend our spirits. Into your hands we commend our spirits. You have redeemed us, O God, O God of truth. Into your hands we commend our spirits. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Into your hands we commend our spirits. us offer our prayers for this evening. Lord, we are in special days, in places we know, but in ways we do not know. With so much uncertainty before us, remind us again that you are with us.
Remind us that in all times you call us to be faithful to the ends of the earth and in our homes. Help us remember that counting our prosperity does not enumerate your mercy. Help us remember that we might truly confess you are Lord. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the day, especially for the good we were permitted to give and to receive. The day is now past, and we commit it to you. We entrust to you the night. We rest securely, for you are our help, and you neither slumber nor sleep. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray as Christ has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now may the almighty and merciful God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless, preserve, and keep us this night and forevermore. Amen.